Has your family ever visited Branson, Missouri area? If so, chances are you've driven across Table Rock Dam. But did you know the dam played a major role in what has become one of the biggest tourist destinations in America? It's true. Stick around, we'll tell you how. This video is brought to you in part by the official RV Camping Journal, the most complete way to record and preserve your family travel adventures. Get your copies today by clicking the link in the description. Thank you for sharing a moment of your time with us. Happy camping! As we were driving home across Table Rock Dam today, I started thinking back about things I've learned about the area over the past 30 years of living here in Branson. I bet neither Reuben S. Branson, who opened the first general store and post office in 1882 and gave the town of Branson its name, nor Harold Bell Wright, who wrote and published the book The Shepherd of the Hills in 1907, ever dreamed the area they loved so much would one day bring in millions of tourists annually. Chances are, if you've ever visited Branson, Missouri, you too have driven across the dam. But have you ever thought about why it was built? Why it was built where it is? or why it was called Table Rock. We have, so we decided to stop by the Dewey Short Visitor Center to find out more of the history of the lake and dam. As we're crossing the dam, you will notice two mountain tops on your left. The one farthest on the left is where you will find the scenic overlook, which is located on Highway 165. This is what fishermen on the White River used to call the Table Rock and where they said the best fishing was. This was scheduled to be the location of the original dam but it had to be built a mile and a half upstream due to the instability of the rock and not being able to withhold the pressure of such a mighty structure. Next, you will see Baird Mountain. This is where the rock quarry was built that supplied the massive amounts of rock needed for the concrete. This created a major challenge. How would they move that much rock from the quarry to the construction site? So they built what was at that time the world's longest conveyor belt to move the rock to the construction site. The conveyor belt ran 24 hours daily until the dam was completed. If you look closely, you can see the cut of trees, which is now used for electrical lines. This was close to the original pathway of the conveyor belt. As you're driving across Table Rock Dam, the total distance is 6,423 feet, or 1.2 miles. The concrete section is 1,602 feet, and the two earth embankment sections having a total length of 4,821 feet. The dam rises 252 feet above the riverbed below. It contains 1,230,000 cubic yards of concrete and 3,320,000 cubic yards of dirt as the embankment. Four 18-foot diameter pinstock turbines convey water to four 50,000 kilowatt generating units in the powerhouse. And the normal pool of Table Rock Lake is 915, which means there's 915 feet above sea level. Table Rock Dam spillway capacity was evaluated as a result of a dam safety program in the 1990s. It was determined that a release spillway needed to be built in case of emergency flooding relief. This auxiliary spillway was completed in 2005 at approximately $65 million, the same amount the original construction cost in the 1950s. Table Rock Dam operates during flood periods in conjunction with other lakes in the basin to prevent damages along the White River and to help lower the Mississippi River. Since the completion of the dam, flood reduction of the White River has resulted from the combined effect of Table Rock Bull Shoals, and Norfolk Lakes. Now let's go out and check out the Dewey Short Visitor Center. As we enter the Visitor Center, we are greeted with smiling faces welcoming us and a huge poster wall showing us how big the lake really is. It has over 800 miles of shoreline. Then we wander into the photo room. This is where you'll find photos of the dam as it was being built, and you can read about this massive process. We learned that Table Rock Dam is just one of eight dams built along the White River to help control flooding and to create hydroelectric power produced and controlled by the flow of the water that passes through the four massive power plants. Now we move on to see more exhibits. There are several examples of taxidermy showing the many different species of fish found in the lakes. Along with some of the animals that call the Ozarks home, 
Here are a few old photos showing the floods in the area before the dam was built. This picture shows a view from standing on top of the Table Rock. This is what's known today as the Scenic Overlook on Highway 165. And here is what it looks like today. Here you will see a simple example showing you how energy of movement can produce electricity. Ever wonder what the boats and furniture looked like during the era of when the dam was built? I can still remember some of these. Here is a very small replica of one of the turbines to explain how they work, along with some of the controls to show you what they look like. This exhibit tells the story of some of the Native Americans who called the Ozark Mountains home, along with some of the tools that they used. Now let's take a quick ride up the elevator to the observation deck. As we exit the elevator, look hanging from the ceiling. This is the style bucket that they used to pour the concrete onto the dam. Now let's go outside and get a panoramic view of the dam and this part of the lake. What an incredible view this is. Here are a couple of photos of the dam as it was being built back in the 1950s. When you leave the Dewey Shore Visitor Center, drive straight across the highway and wind around to the top back side of the dam. This will give you a better view and understanding of how big the dam really is. Also, look to your right and you will see the power plant and the Shepherd of the Hills fish hatchery. Once the water passes through or over Table Rock Dam, it becomes Lake Taney Como. This is short for Taney County, Missouri. The constant cold 50 degree water of Lake Taney Como is perfect for raising and stocking trout. Fishermen from all the experience levels come from all over the country to try their luck. When the water is low, you may see 20 to 30 fishermen wading through the waters just below the dam with their fly rods in hand. Here we are inside the Shepherd of the Hills fish hatchery just below the dam. No matter whether you like to fish or not, there are plenty of things here to keep you entertained. You'll be amazed at these fish when you pass by and look at the aquarium. Now let's go outside and take a look at even more fish. There are more than 20 concrete ponds in which the fish are kept. You will find all sizes, small to large. Also, you will find some vending machines that is stocked with fish food where you can feed the fish and watch them go crazy trying to get it before the others do. The netting you see over these ponds are designed to keep the birds out. Once the fish have grown to the proper size, they are released into Lake Tanicomo, and the cycle is repeated over and over. Table Rock Lake is one of the most beautiful lakes in the Midwest. 
and it has been bringing tourists from all over the country since the late 1950s. As tourism began to thrive once the lake was built, the May Brothers started a country music variety show called The Ball Novels, and it was an instant hit. Then, a few years later, the Presleys built the first theater on what we now know as Highway 76, or The Strip. Along with Silver Dollar City Theme Park, these two shows started something that continues to this day. Not only were people enjoying the lake, now they had some inside entertainment after nightfall. As word began to spread and Branson became a huge success, more and more people came to the area. If you ever visit the Branson area, be sure to drive across Table Rock Dam, then stop by the Dewey Shore Visitor Center, spend some time looking at their exhibits, then you can take a walk or ride along the lakeshore on their paved four and a half mile round trip. Each of these locations, including the trail, are ADA accessible. You'll be amazed at the beautiful things you'll see and learn on your way. So there you have it. Now you know how Table Rock Down played a major role in the development of the tourism in the area. We hope you enjoyed this video and we want to thank you for spending a part of your life with us. Until next time, stay safe and have fun, let's travel.